Yeah, l- let's get in. Just tell me, um, f- okay, first off, because this is an internet controversy, how do you yeah. pronounce your name? Uh, the first name is pronounced Yo-Yo. Okay. And the last name is Chinese, so in English you would say Shui or Shu. Shui but, um, Shu. Yeah, you just, people just say Shui. Yeah, Yo-Yo okay. Shui. Okay, because <laughs> I think the first time I heard your name or so- somebody asked me a question and yeah. I was like, you, you? I was like, what is this? Yeah, then, yeah people say that, but it's okay. I mean, <laughs> how, it's how it's spelled, you know, like in Chinese, that's how you spell it. But when yeah. you pronounce it, it's yo-yo. So, yeah. Got you. Um, and where where are you from? Like, you're in San Francisco is where you were living before this trip? Or where did you yeah. kind of, yeah, to, give me that whole uh, story there. Yeah, my, my, my family's from China. Um, we, you know, I was born and raised in um, the San Francisco Bay Area. And, um, you know, recently I've been living in England for school, um, but now I'm back in uh, San Francisco full time. Okay, cool. So, and how were you able to get a Tesla Model 3 so early? Um, <laughs> well, I actually haven't really told anybody about, uh, about it, but um, I was able to um, reserve it in store very early mm-hmm. um, using a little bit of a time zone glitch. And, um, that allowed me to, I, at least what I perceived to be, um, jumping the line just a slight bit, um, because I was the first one to receive the, um, the customer invite to configure. Um, and after I configured, I, you know, put the whole payment down within, I configured and put my payment down within nine minutes. Um, so I think that, I think that also helped with, um, you know, pushing me up to the top of the line. So yeah, I was one of the first to take delivery back in December. And you were already a Tesla owner, right? Exactly. I was a Tesla owner. Um, I ordered my first Model S in 2013. Um, you know, so I've been a longtime Tesla owner. My household now has three Teslas, including the three. Um, you know, and uh, to be honest with you, I've been thinking about buying a fourth. Um, you know, we, I want to purge all the gas cars from my family and just go straight up EVs. And for now, the only EV I find to be viable for just our lifestyles is a Tesla. So yeah, no doubt. I, I'm the same way. So I have a S and an X. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I have an S and a three now. Um, and I still have an old gas truck because I own a home and every now and then I have to haul stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the same pl- path I was on. So it's great to hear. So, all right. So you got your, you ordered your first S, your first Tesla in 2013. You got it 2014. Exactly. Um, and then you had that and then you were very early Model 3. Uh, so what inspired this whole trip? And just tell me about it, because I, I kind of heard about it way later in the game. Um, and, and everything is on Facebook, right? Is that like, like, tell me about like what inspired it and like how you've been sharing it and kind of what the idea was. Sure. Uh, you know, pretty much everything is on Facebook um, on my road trip page, um, which I, uh, you know, ha- has quite a few followers by this point. Um, but basically before it took delivery, um, I was just going to do a small road trip with a friend and, um, you know, it's going to be our winter break. And we thought, well, look, we've done a bunch of cross country trips before in the Tesla and that'd be cool to drive it back to New York and, um, also meet some people along the way. And then suddenly, um, you know, I posted that on like a small Facebook group, uh, I think it's the Tesla Model 3 Facebook group. Um, that thing got like 1,100 likes in one day, yeah. which for that was some sort of record, you know. And people were saying, can you stop here? Can you stop here? Can you stop here? Is there somewhere I can follow your trip? Um, and then I thought to myself, okay, maybe I should take this a little bit more seriously. So I created a Facebook page. A bunch of people jumped onto it, you know, said, I really would love for you to come here. We can host you here. Come to my house. You know, come eat dinner with me. And I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. Um, so... So yeah, uh, you know, the, the American trip was the American Canada trip, <clears throat> excuse me, um, was mostly just about, um, showing people the car, you know, and, uh, for me to travel, you know, it was winter break. I wanted to do something. Um, so two hours after taking delivery of my model three, I did my first event in burning game. That's our, that was our launch event. And then, um, I proceeded to drive, uh, 36 out of 50 U S states as well as, uh, three Canadian provinces. Um, over 21 days. So over 21 days, cover 23,000 kilometers, uh, pretty much driving nonstop every day. You know, the majority of my time was spent sleeping in the car and uh, mo- uh, a large majority of the car, uh, of the trip was without any assistance. Um, so I had, I flew in some friends to help me during parts of the trip. Um, but you know, most of it was just me driving and trying to squeeze in as much sleep as I could. And um, <clears throat> have you figured out camper mode? Uh, my because my sleeping never exceeded like an hour and a half at a time. Um, I didn't really need camper mode. Um, but 
my camper mode would be just to leave one door open. Um, okay. that, that keeps the system awake. And um, honestly, I, I just need the temperature to, to fall asleep. And then while I'm sleeping, if it's really that bad, I'll wake back up, you know. Because yeah, yeah. um, some but, friends but, of mine were asking about that. And, and yeah. I personally use camper mode in my ass a lot. Um, for my son who falls asleep when we're driving and I can just kind of leave him in there and keep the temperature cool and that kind of thing. Right, so, right, right. Um, but I was curious how you handled it cause I knew you were sleeping in the, in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've never really spent like, um, in Europe I have in Europe. Um, you know, I would just be sleeping for like 10 hours at a time in the car, but thankfully the temperatures have been actually more mild here. So it's kind of like sleeping outside, you know, the temperatures are, yeah. are fine. Uh, but yeah, anyways, continuing where I left off. So, you know, I finished the road trip in um, back in California. Um, and then, you know, people, at that point, people were like, are you coming to Europe? Um, and I thought, OK, why not? So I looked into that. Um, there were some challenges. Like, for example, I had to borrow some money to pay the car off because the U.S. government doesn't let you export cars that have a loan on them. Oh, wow. um, that's probably for good reason, because, you know, otherwise people would just ship their car to a different country and you'll you'll never see the car again. Uh, <laughs> um, you could so, have probably driven to Canada and then shipped it from Canada, right? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, I paid the car off, you know, worked with a bunch of um, people to to ship the car over there. And um, before you knew it, uh, I think it was mid-April, um, the car was in England. And um, since then, uh, I've driven uh, 23 countries in Europe. I also covered North Africa. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah, so in Morocco um, and met thousands of people along the way. Um, the pace in Europe has been a little bit slower. So most of the nights I am actually sleeping in hotels. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been fun. There's no supercharging. So it's kind of mm. like going back to how electric vehicles were, where you have to kind of scavenge for, you know, charging ports and everything, you know, charging yeah. connectors. Um, yeah. And, so. and is that because the superchargers have different connectors? The supercharger is a different connector. We built our own adapter to try to fix that problem. But um, I think there is some sort of um, incompatibility software wise, mm. um, because even though the car was talking to the supercharger, the supercharging wasn't actually starting. Yeah, so maybe the VIN or something is programmed into this charger saying, hey, yeah. like, I'm exactly. not sure. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so amazing. First off, so the reason for the trip, really, it was just kind of an idea, a fun idea. But then so many people, you know, jumped on board and were like, yes, 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 yeah. keep doing it. So you were just like, yeah, why not? And all this time, you're you're off from school, right? So you have the time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, um, at, at some point it went from just me having fun because you know, on the U.S. trip, I mean, you know, these are memories that I'll take forever. I spent Christmas night and, uh, you know, Christmas night in Texas in a parking lot. You know, I just remember that like people <laughs> came out to see me. Um, you know, I can say that my first service center visit with my Model 3 was in uh, Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, my second was in Atlanta. My third was in Denver. My fourth in Bellevue, Washington. You know, and uh, I I um, spent New Year's Eve with my father, who I flew out to New York City. You know, I got to see the ball drop in Times Square for the first time. So you know, that was that was fun. That was exhilarating. Um, and you know, it was just awesome meeting everyone along the way. You know, everybody was in such good spirits. Um, yeah. And um, but um, you know, at some point, it almost became like an obligation. You know, people are like, "When are you coming here next? When are you coming here?" <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like a burden because it really isn't. Um, but uh, you know, at some point, I just felt like I needed to do this uh, to to do my part for the EV movement. You know what I mean? No, it's well. Welcome to the pressures of uh, being an internet creator, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, you could, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> if, if, if there's a news story that goes by that I don't talk about on an episode, I hear about it for <laughs> yeah, weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. But you're right. It is the greatest kind of problem to have because um, <laughs> you know, if you get to do this for a living, it's it's the most fun, exciting thing. And and I know I, I really? do want to. <laughs> Yeah, I do want to talk about this because I think I saw some posts and I know I know you posted about it. Uh, yeah. People were kind of giving you shit for like monetizing, for asking for money for this. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, from a guy that does this professionally for a living, yeah. I'm looking yeah. at it going, you're on Facebook, which there aren't ads. So you're not making exactly. money on any of exactly. that stuff. Exactly. Yep. Why did you go that route versus like YouTube where you could have, you know, from you would have been monetized basically from the get go. And I mean, yeah, exactly. not that the point of it was to make money, but at least that money could have helped. Right. So well, give, me, give me that whole thinking behind that. 
Well, yeah, you know, just like you said, people accused me. They're like, why, for example, um, part of my road trip, uh, how I funded it was charging for test drives. So I let total strangers drive my car for $10. Um, you know, these weren't long test drives. I think the longest ones are like 15 minutes, you know, but I gave everybody who had a driver license an opportunity to drive the Model 3. Um, but, you know, from the, from the get-go, I just said this was just a way to make sure we didn't have crazy lines for test drives, that only people who were yeah. serious about paying 10 bucks would come and drive the car. Um, and, um, you know, just like you said, if I was actually doing this for money, uh, you know, why didn't I go on YouTube? Why didn't I sell merchandise? You know, right. why didn't I try to find a sponsorship or something? You know, I did this whole trip, you know, um, at, at the end, uh, I, and plus at the end I had a thousand dollars left over. Um, I donated all a thousand dollars profit to Sierra club. Um, so, you know, from the beginning I said it wasn't about profit. It's about covering my costs. Because to some extent, I'm doing this for everybody else. Um, right. So I said, you know, I think it's fair that you know I, I, I can get myself a paid vacation to some extent. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I also post all sorts of these like viral videos, you know, um, about, for example, when I was testing the maximum speed mm -hmm. or things like that. You know, these are videos that would go great on YouTube to make some money, but right. you know, I, I'm not about that. You know, I, I I've just been doing this out of, um, you know, just just for free to the community. Yeah. No. I I completely get it uh yeah you know and and it's one of those things when i saw that criticism i thought this is this is absurd like how oh, you, you, know. you know people complaining about that have not actually been on the internet to see all the crazy exploitations that people try to go through to make yeah, well, money off of people it's like this is the simplest like this is you're you were doing it in the purest form i feel you know no, no, it, it was it was the purest form i was trading a service for a service i wasn't even trading anything else and, and 10 bucks uh, is nothing i mean <laughs> and, and, you know and, and, you know if, if it consoles you i think um I, I think it's easy you know i've said this all along the trip and i and um this is not the haters will be haters line but um it's easy to criticize somebody like you and me who are out there i think trying to make a difference you know, and, and trying to cover a cost along the way, right. you know, versus, uh, you, you know, you're, you know, versus someone who's just sitting behind a keyboard, really doing nothing. Yeah, um, exactly. So. Exactly. That, that, that's the thing, I, you know, and, and not to go off on a tangent about creating stuff on the internet, but, uh, earlier on when I was just getting started, there were a lot of people saying, Oh, well, you should have done this differently. Or like, I would have done this. And, and my comment yeah. always back was like, cool, send me the link to that video when you make it. Yeah, right? right. Because you're right. not going to, because this shit is hard. This is no, not no. easy, <laughs> you know. People, people say that on my road trip all the time, yeah. saying you know they, they wouldn't have done something, um, but I said, you know what, the road trip up until the collision worked out the way it did, and um, yeah. you know, if I had done it any differently, maybe it wouldn't have been the same. So I, I, I'm proud of what has been accomplished thus far. Yeah, man. No, I, and I, I commend you. I think that you've done an amazing job. I think you. you could go write a <laughs> book you. now. You know, this is such a cool experience. <laughs> Not only do you get the memories out of it, but I think a lot of people want to hear about this. I think that, that there's a great story to be told. So, yeah. To, yeah. Okay. So talk to me about the, the collision. Um, so you're sure. in Greece, or in you're Greece, a 23rd, yeah. 24th country in Europe. 25th. Um, 25th country in Europe. Um, what what's going on? What happened? I read the post, but just, you know, recap sure. that for people yeah. that maybe didn't read the whole statement on it. Um, so I had just gone from uh, Fedorum, which is the Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia, the former Yugoslavic Republic, down to Macedonia, Greece, which is the northern part of Greece. I just crossed the border. I remember I was held up at the border due to my passport. You know, they were complaining how full it was and how I stayed in <laughs> Europe for so long. Um, they actually pulled out a piece of paper and started counting how many days I've been in Europe to make sure I didn't <laughs> overstay my, uh, overstay my, yeah. Um, but, uh, anyways, yeah, after like 20, 30 minutes there, um, you know, I started headed out on the road. I was going to this guy's house. Um, he was hosting me for the night and, um, the day after I planned to drive to Athens. Um, so his house was exactly 500 kilometers from Athens. So it was perfect. And he had an outlet installed just for me. Um, you know, he's like, look, you, you can charge at this high powered outlet. Um, but anyways, I, I crossed the border. I'm just, you know, I'm driving on this highway. It's a two lane highway lit with like, you know, pretty good lights. You know, it's not like the other, um, European, some of the other European countries are a bit more sketchy, you know, bad roads, no lighting whatsoever, or like, you know, a lot of shrubbery on the side. You know, this thing had crash barriers on both sides, a proper median, no trash, no garbage, um, clear lane markings. Um, and you know, the speed limit was 120. So I just set my car in 120 and, you know, it's like I've done for the past six months, you know, just driving forward, 
no yeah. problem. You know? um, and, uh, you know, at this point I was just kind of like, you know, thinking, you know, thinking about the day, thinking about, you know, what I was going to post on Facebook, thinking about what to do next, you know, just kind of spacing out there. Um, and I had my left hand just resting on the steering wheel, uh, my right hand, um, on my lap and, um, I'm just cruising down zero signs of problems. You know, I've, uh, I've driven on European roads where the car kind of feels a little bit shaky, you know, for example, like, um, you know, places where the wind is high or the lane lines aren't clear, but this felt totally normal. I'm just driving down normally. And, um, you know, just for a second, just because, um, I hadn't checked the directions since I got on the highway, I took my phone out from the, um, from the center console and, um, you know, I look at it, you know, space ID, I swipe up and, um, I just remember moving the maps down so that I could see, you know, the, the road I was going on to see if there was left or right turns or something like that. Um, and then suddenly I feel the car lurch to the right. And by lurching, I mean a sudden and just unpredictable swerving. I don't want to say it was violent, but it was certainly unexpected and very sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that point I looked up. And lo and behold, it's the crash attenuator. Mm. You know, I, I, you know I, I don't know exactly what distance it was, but we're talking a matter of tens of feet in front of my car. Yeah. Um, you know, I immediately just grabbed the wheel as hard as I could. You know, I remember swerving the car to the right. Um, and because, my, because the crash attenuator was here and my car had swerved from, from here to here, you know, Due to my correction, instead of hitting the crash attenuator head on, it had swerved, um, and that's why the it. left side yeah. it just clipped it. That's why the left side of the um, car hit the right side of the crash barrier. And I just remember, uh, first of all, losing control of the steering. I just remember like I was grasping the steering so hard. I mean, I later found out the wheel had basically detached. You know, explaining mm. why there was zero control. Uh, I just remember grabbing the wheel, and um, I was just screaming like, "No, no, no!" Um, yeah, that, I, I, and, um, there's a million things are going through my mind. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, shit, the road trip is over. You know, I just fucked up big time. You know, what, 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 what just happened? Um, you know, I was just don't in shock. Die, first off. No, I don't want to die. First off. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my car was just still barreling down this ramp Yeah, and, um, our came to a stop about like maybe two, 300 feet down the ramp. Um, and, uh, you know, I was I, I immediately just tried to get out of the car and my door was 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 um, jammed shut because the metal had bent so much. My door was jammed shut, so um, I kicked my door open, um, and it ended up opening. And it was just so quiet; there was just nothing happening, um, yeah. and um, there were no cars. It was like twelve a.m., um, and uh, I just stood there for maybe fifteen minutes in shock. I didn't do anything. I just stood there for like fifteen minutes. I was just thinking, like, yeah. what am I going to do? You know, I'm in the middle of like northern Greece. <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't do know call? anybody. Here. Yeah. What do you oh, even do? Oh, no, I'm serious. And, um, you know, a passerby came over like 15 minutes in and he said, should I call the police for you? And my answer was, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I'm like, I, I don't know. What are they going to say? Yeah. Right. You know, cause in America you call the police, they can help you out, you know, write the report or something. But I'm like, well, what are you supposed to tell the Greek police? Um, but yeah, anyway, so he called the Greek police, the Greek came out, the Greek police came out and, um, uh, they took a report. Thankfully, the, the, the responding police officer, the director guy, he he was a big Tesla fan and he knew about the Model 3. And I was like, autopilot. He's like, yes, I know what autopilot is. And I'm like, OK, great. So he was able to write the report correctly, you know, with full knowledge of what autopilot was. Um, they even the, the police guys took turns sitting in the car, you know, so I held my <laughs> roadside meet and greet there. Um, <laughs> Yes, but you know they they took the measurements, they investigated it, and then um, basically they they drove me to a hotel where I slept, and the next morning they had the car towed, um, you know, with me in it uh, to Thessaloniki, which is I think the second biggest city in Greece. It's this little port wait, city. Wait, wait, why were you in it? Uh, because um, the tow truck driver's girlfriend wanted to go to Thessaloniki, so there were no more <laughs> seats in front. So they said, <laughs> so they said, sit in the back. So you know, you got this guy sitting in the back. <laughs> Look at me, you know, this is like random Chinese guy in Greece <laughs> uh, sitting in the back of this crash car with California plates, um, just like driving like four hours to Thessaloniki. Um, That's crazy. So, yeah, and um, that was my last ride in my Model 3 for now. For now. So, yeah. Tell me you have a photo of that. I, I, I do. I have a video <laughs> okay, of it, uh, on the Facebook page. That, yeah. That's true autopilot right there. 
That's true autopilot. Yeah, secrecy. <laughs> okay, so before yeah. you go on, because there, there's more to the story, and I want to get to it, but tell me about navigation, because I got a question recently um, from someone that if does the navigation in the Model Three work in Europe? Uh, the, the navigation does not work. Um, okay. So uh, the, the 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 car knows the coordinates and knows where it is. Uh, mm-hmm. Navigation by navigation, I think we're talking about turn by turn directions. Okay. Um, so even when my car was connected to the internet. I was, you know, like I had no service in Europe, right? So I right. had no cell phone, uh, no um, data connection right. uh, because the, the SIM card is an American SIM card. Right. But even when I was connected to Tesla service Wi-Fi, let's say in Barcelona, I was mm-hmm. connected to their Wi-Fi. I was able to download the maps, but um, let's, you know, I used the voice command. I said, you know, navigate to, let's say, Paris. You know, the, the car didn't understand that. Um, so. Right. The algorithm for navigation is not ready for Europe, mm-hmm. um, and I think um, Tesla. I think it might be a licensing thing. You know, I think possibly uh, Tesla, maybe. or or something like that. You know, but Tesla only downloads the the region you need onto your car, um, whatever region it was built in. Yeah, I mean, I mean that kind of makes sense. Yeah, just from a technical standpoint. So, could you or did you try at all to change the SIM card? Because I saw a video of somebody doing you that. You did. Um, I. Uh, I, I, I tried to get Palo Alto service in California to, to swap the SIM card. I said, at least tell me how to, or take it out Mm -hmm. so that I can get someone over there to stick another one in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, what I was told by their senior technician was that the model three SIM card is soldered to the motherboard. It's soldered where you can't remove it. Yeah. Uh, apparently uh, that's what I was told. Um, I had zero information or zero help on how to switch it. And because the Model 3's MCU is designed like so flush with the with the body of uh, with the rest of the dashboard and everything, mm-hmm. it's not as easy to service as let's say the Model S is, where I think you just pop something out near yeah. the little yeah. tray on the I, screen. I'll, I'll have to go back and check, but I mean, I, I saw I saw the headline of the video and I saw a few of the uh, uh, you know a little bit of it. I didn't I didn't watch the whole thing, but the the headline of the video was like it's easy to change. So mm, I'll have yeah. to go back and look. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I'm not sure if that would have mattered. Like maybe you would have had a map, but you wouldn't have had directions, right? I would have had directions. And uh, to be quite frank with you, the uh, the Model uh, 3's navigation is uh, probably more distracting than my phone. Yeah. Um, the Model 3 navigation, it, it's so hard to understand. You know, you don't have the binnacle in front of you or a heads-up display giving yeah. you the directions. So reading the Model 3's directions involved looking away yeah. as well. No, so I'm telling not- you, that, that's why. So anytime I actually use navigation, I put my phone, I have a little uh, thing I put right in. It just sits right behind the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it uses Waze. And so it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they have Waze I think I, I, think here, I saw but, your, your video on that, right? You, you're making the heads up display or something like that. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah. honestly, I 20 bucks solved. Yeah. Yeah, Problem solved. That. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So thanks for clarifying that stuff because that was a question and I wasn't sure about it. So, okay. So you, you get in the accident, um, you get the car towed. Uh, what happens next? You stay, where, you stay somewhere nearby or you don't stay at your, that guy's house because that's still 250 kilometers away or something, right? Hey, well, well, yeah. Um, you know, so actually like I, I, I crashed in Northern Greece and I was towed to Eastern Greece and this guy lives in central Northern Greece. Mm. So we, we passed his house in the middle of the night. Um, but I, I towed the car to where I said I was going to have my Thessaloniki meet and greet. Oh, okay. So I did end up showing the car to about 30 people over there. Um, you know, albeit on the back of a tow truck. Um, <laughs> but no, they were very excited. They were actually hosting, the city hall was hosting a, a e-mobility rally. So they had a bunch of electric cars there. And, you know, I was like, well, here's my car, you know, yeah. um, I, I can't drive, but, you know, here's my car. Um, but yeah, we, we towed it to the local tow yard and, um, they said, well, look, you can park it here while you think about what you want to do. Um, you know, I took the bus to a hotel, I slept for a night and, um, the next day, um, the next day I thought, well, look, there's nothing for me to do here. So I might as well do what I meant was going to do to go to Athens. I've never been to Athens. Um, you know, I never want dreams of going to Athens. Yeah, so, sure. um, basically that guy I was going to meet, he drove an hour and a half from that city I was going to meet him in. And he came to meet me. He's like, look, sorry, you know, like, but I'm here to help you. Um, so he helped me just uh, help, help me get my stuff. He helped me get some stuff out of the car. Um, and then he drove me to the airport. Um, so, yeah, I've been in Athens for the past two nights. Um, and I'm spending my final night here now. Um, it's currently about 8 p.m. And, oh, actually, it's almost 9. And then after this, um, I'm going back to America. So, 
So what's what's the final step? So the last I saw, you weren't sure if you were going to repatriate the car in order to get right. the logs. So right. what's what's next? You know, um, so so I, I'm still deciding um, because right now we're we have no other than my account of what happened, which I still stand by 100 percent, obviously. Um, we have no concrete like data based evidence of what happened. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if autopilot is actually did fully malfunction in this case. We, we don't know that. So, um, right. It could have uh, been a mechanical thing in the steering. Could or, have been a lot of, yeah. Could have been a lot of things and, uh, you know, who knows? Um, but at this point, you know, I think a lot of people agree that autopilot, you know, did malfunction that, um, there were similar incidents that involved the car driving into the gore point and, you know, colliding with the, uh, with a crash attenuator. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't stay here while I think about this, you know, I've yeah. got to go back home, you know, I'm in the country where I don't speak the language. It's confusing. Um, but you know, Tesla said at first that I would have to tow the car to, to Germany or to Austria to have it diagnosed because usually they pull the crash logs over the air mm -hmm. and there's no SIM card here, you know, so they can't, they right. can't do that. You need to plug into it. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, the other day they told me, well, that will be, have to be at your expense. Um, and I'm like, okay, so how much is it? And they're like, it'll be $3,200 hmm. to tow the car one way to one of the service centers. As I'm like, no, you know, that's okay. I think I'll tow it back to America. If I, I, had I mean, to. how much does a tow truck cost? Can you just buy one and drive it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> right? no, I, uh, no, no, I, I'm not even kidding you. Someone actually sent me a picture. They said, I can rent a tow truck for cheaper and I'll that's, come and help you. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like it, yeah, yeah, it seems yeah, like there might be said, an easier way. Oh, no, there, there probably is. But, um, but anyways, and, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm also open to the idea of selling the car here in selling the car here in, in Europe. Um, I've had a bunch of offers, you know, some ridiculous, some people are like, I'll give you 5,000 bucks. I'm like, no, you know, it's okay for $5,000. I'll make it furniture, you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, some people are offering a little bit more. Um, but, um, I, I just have to consider because if I were to bring it back to America to try to repair it, Obviously, that will involve time, a lot of time, um, the shipping cost round trip, plus about $20,000 worth of repairs. Um, I've yet to contact my body shop, who I'm going to ask about, you know, a brief estimate. Um, but, you know, I, I've been thinking, you know, just because, like, like I told you, people expect a lot from me. And I've started this trip. I made a lot of promises, such as I'm going to go to Norway. I think, you know, Bjorn, Bjorn Island, you know, he, yeah. um, we, we, we had planned to travel Norway together. You know, he knew I couldn't charge in Norway on the supercharger. So he said, I'm going to rent a trailer. I'm going to stick your car in the back of it. And we're going to drive Nor Norway in my model X and we're going to meet people along the way. And I'm like, That's that sounds, that yeah. sounds like the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, and I just regret not going to Norway first. You know, I decided mm -hmm. to go to France instead of going to Norway. Um, and that's a big regret. And, you know, being the person I am, I'm all about adventure. I'm about, you know, finishing what I started and I'm about, um, you know, just having no regrets, you know, so far I, I really don't have regrets. I, I, I know I said I regret not going to Norway, but just all in all, I don't regret much. Um, yeah. I think what I would ideally like to do is repair the car and bring it back so that the rest of the people can see it, that I can finish the trip, you know, go to the rest of these countries that usually I, you know, like Bulgaria, I mean, people don't go to Bulgaria just normally. You know, the right. only reason I would go is via car, and I would love to just have that opportunity to go there, understand that place, and you know, and also the rest of the countries. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So, you can't get it repaired in Europe, is the deal, right? I can, but you know, for example, when I, uh, you know, in my Model S, I T-boned some guy that cut me off. Um, he was at fault for the people who think I'm a dangerous driver. Yeah. Um, but that repair was twenty three thousand uh, dollars, and it took three and a half months. Yeah. Um, they were waiting on, I think, two or three parts from Tesla. You know, Tesla is notorious for not having the parts ready. Right. The Model Three is supposedly supposed to have better parts availability, but I think that's ideally in the future, not now. Where well, not and, only and obviously not in Europe, right? Like I have. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I've had a have, number of issues with mine, and yeah, yeah they've been fixed you know, usually yeah. within a couple of days, you know, but I'm right. only a, only a, an hour flight from San Francisco. So exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, um, uh, body shops here can do it, you know, fixing a car is fixing a car, but they're like, you are going to have to be the logistical point of contact in America for ordering the parts from an American body shop 
and then sending those parts one by one to us. Oh, yeah. and I'm like, wow, you know, that's just, that's a lot, you know, and, um, you know, shipping the car is about $2,000 plus a month. So I think I'd rather do the month and the $2,000 than potentially risk some other thing. For example, let's say the European authorities are like, no, you can't ship this part for some reason yeah, or, right. uh, That's totally or something impossible. goes wrong. Yeah, then, then you know, you just wasted all that time trying to attempt this repair, which, you know, it's not worth it. So, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. you know uh, do you know uh, Rich Rebuild? He has a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he might. I don't know if you've reached out to him, but but he's the. When I saw this, that was the first thing that came to mind. I'm like, oh, you need to go yeah. see Rich, and he'll yeah. take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I'll be honest with you. I haven't really watched any of his videos. All I understand is that this guy is a crazy rebuilder. Um, yeah. But you know, my, my goal at the end is to have this car back in Europe, being able to drive it. I, I think that's that's my goal, and I think that's what I'd ideally like to see from this. Not you know, rebuild the car into something else crazy. Some people are like, you know, take the, take the complete frame off the car, take the battery and the, the drive unit and build some sort of modified car out of it. No. You know, but I'm like, nah, I want my model three. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, no, yeah, and, no, rich, rich is a good guy to talk to if you, if you want to go that yeah. route. So he, he's rebuilt his model S he bought, I think two or three model S's that were completely salvaged, like flooded fire. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. basically built a new one out of it and it works well, beautifully. Okay. So, yeah. Anyways, he's well, he's a good guy to talk to, but he's in he's in the East Coast, so but probably a challenge for you being on the West Coast. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, I, I I hope you're able to do that. I hope the journey continues. It's so it's been so great following along. Um, what about school? Are you going back? Like, what's next there? Oh no, I I, I I'm done with school for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm I'm back in America. Hence, I have so much free time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I. I don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I, I have, I have stuff to do. Um, I have also a girlfriend at home who I've been neglecting basically for the past six months. Um, so, you know, people think this guy is rich. He has all the time in the world to travel the world. That's not true. You know, I've really made a lot of sacrifices to be able to do this. It's totally worth it. You know, um, like today I went to the, um, to the, uh, Greek, em- uh, to the American embassy in, uh, Athens here to get a new passport because uh, my passport is totally full. They started stamping the uh, front pages. Um, and the, the woman's like, where, where have you traveled recently? I'm like, well, look, in the past two months, I've been to 23 countries. And she's like, wow, that's more than our diplomats have traveled to. Um, you know, so th- this has been totally worth it, you know, like um, yeah. meeting people. And Ben, I think when you have the opportunity, you should come to Europe to meet the Tesla community. Um, no, I, just, I plan on it later this year, actually. I'm planning really? on spending... Um, so. Me and my wife are are um, have been learning Spanish for like three years. Oh, and, really? Well, and, you... and we love Spain. So okay, fantastic. Yeah. So I, I've You're... been talking. Um, there, I have a friend. Saul actually, yeah, Saul Lopez. Yeah, we're gonna go visit him for a week, and he's in Paris. And then yes. we're gonna probably go spend a few weeks, maybe a month down in Madrid or something like that. So awesome, awesome. Yeah, I um I charged in Saul's garage in Paris. Um. And then um, I met Saul in Madrid, and I gave him the first test drive in Spain. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we, we had a great time, and um, you know, I, I was saying how important Saul's work was because, you know, Saul. I think a lot of his work just involves translating the news to Spanish in a way that's understandable to the Spanish audience. Mm-hmm. But or, you know, you know, if it weren't for him, a lot of people wouldn't be interested in all this English news. Maybe even news that you know you and I put out. You know, they don't under, quite understand it. So right. Saul was really you know, integral for, you know, spreading my trip to all the people there. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, um, the developing nature of EVs in Europe has created this pioneering spirit among everybody, this sense of community that we can't leave anybody behind, that every single EV owner is important. You know, you've got all the Tesla owners there. They respect all the Leaf owners. Maybe not the case in yeah. California. You know, people <laughs> see Leaf and they're like, there's a Leaf, you yeah. know, so – um yeah, yeah it's definitely over- different out here yeah it's definitely it's more different. like you know t- i mean even teslas are like par for the course you know oh exactly, exactly. yeah it's just yeah. like that's like, that's a normal car like if you want a fancy car you don't get a tesla you need like no, something exactly. Uh, exactly. something else it's more yeah. exotic so yeah cool man well, I, hey, I, yeah 
thank you for the time. I appreciate sure. everything here. Uh, I really wish you the best on, on, and let's keep in touch. Let me know when you're back in California. Please, I'd love please. to meet up um, and we can do some stuff. And I actually have a repair of my Model 3 that needs some body work uh, as well. Oh, which really? I, I haven't told people about yet, but um, I'll be sharing that down the road once I figure it out. Uh, it. Yeah. I'm really nervous about that too. Like the, the timing and the cost, like it's crazy. Yeah, so. yeah. My, my advice to you uh, before I go is please read the reviews because I once fixed my Model S at a at a Tesla approved body shop, uh-huh. but the repairs were so bad I couldn't believe it. I went uh. to a different Tesla repair shop and uh, it was just like ten times better, um, just like yeah. it out of the factory. Um, so yeah, just just take care of your car, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm pretty fortunate down here in Southern California. We got some good options, but yeah, I'll definitely oh, exactly. right. definitely yeah. double check that. Cool, man. Well, best of luck with everything. Thank you for joining me here. Um, Guys, if you don't know about Yo-Yo's journey, where can people find you? Where can they follow the next steps and the next phases? Uh, You can follow me on Facebook. You can follow my Instagram, uh, Tesla Model 3 Road Trip. Not sponsored by Tesla, but that's the name. (laughs) None of us are. (laughs) You know, I get that question all the time. It's like, no. (laughs) We're doing this because we love EVs. We're doing this because we want people to buy EVs. We want people to understand how fun it is to to own an EV, how, you know, that other people, when they say that it's hard to own an EV, yeah. I just drove basically to Asia from California with an EV. <laughs> you know, nothing's impossible in an EV. Yeah, awesome. I couldn't agree more, man. Cool. Well, thanks so much, and uh, I'll be in touch soon, man. Cool. All right. Thanks so much.